Hey everyone, this is Gary, and uh, I'm in my garden, as you can see here, and uh, I've got um, my uh, camera has at the moment a 50 millimeter macro lens. This lens is designed to get in close that by definition makes it a macro lens. This is not the best focal length for macro shooting because for example if I was to shoot a bug I'd have to get in pretty close. 50 millimeters means I'm going to be getting in pretty close. Uh, let me just very quickly take a picture of this flower if I take the lens cap off and I'm going to focus and show you I think you have to turn these cameras on. <clears throat> you can see how close I was. If I had a 100 millimeter lens, I would have been back here, or 180, or whatever, you know. The point is, to get in close, I have to actually physically be close, and that's due to the fact that this is a 50 millimeter focal length. Um, I'm gonna use my flash. I've got a, a transmitter on it, on my camera, that is. I've got a Cowboy Studio radio transmitter and um, this flash has a receiver on it. These are very inexpensive. I, the two of them together are like 20 bucks. But they work pretty well, I have to say. They're very reliable. So here's how this works. I'll flash this at the camera. There's a test button on top of the transmitter. So you can see. Right now I have it set to um, uh, the lowest power, which is 1 128th as opposed to one to one and I also have a full cut CTO gel on here and that's because I want to mimic uh, evening sun like setting sun so it's gonna make everything uh, slightly um, you know warm uh, it may actually be too warm but I can fix that in, in Lightroom if I have to and my camera's white balance is actually set to sunlight I could set it to sunlight and flash they're almost exactly identical so, um, you know, I, I've got a lot of flowers here that I can shoot, so um, I'm going to just start shooting and see what I come up with. The only way to get better is to just do it. Okay, I know you can't see me, but it doesn't matter. You can see this flower, and I have a flash on the ground behind it. So it's basically throwing light up into the flower. And uh, I wanted to show you this setup because I'm actually getting some really cool shots. I'm lining them up such that I'm dropping, uh, I'm blocking the light from the flash so it backlights the scene. And it's pretty cool. Check that out, right? Oop, there's some flash coming through the flower. It's really like the critical thing here is to get the proper angle so you can, there we go. So the flower's blocking the flash. It's slightly translucent so it kind of glows and look at how all the leaves around it are lit however um, there's the upper left hand corner of the um, of the frame is kind of dark so I'm gonna basically try and bounce light back into it using my little tiny uh, reflector and I think all I need to do at least this is my theory is hold it like this so it bounces light back into the scene. And let's see if I'm right. Try and get the shot. Yeah, not really. <laughs> uh, I'll just take a few more here and then uh, move on. All right, I'm gonna go on shooting. Okay guys, uh, here we are inside a Lightroom. This was the first image I shot. It was natural light. You can see it's pretty dull. But what I want to point out here is depth of field. I shot this at f5.6, um, but I really don't like really narrow depths of field in shooting macro. I, this flower should be sharp front to back. And at f5.6, it ain't even close. Look at this, look at this flower petal right in front here. It's so soft. Uh, back here, it gets really soft. Look at that. So uh, to me, this image is unusable. The only sharp area of this photo is right in the middle, right here. And because by definition, macro shooting means you're shooting with a very um, short focusing distance, that really impacts on the size of your depth of field. Uh, some of you might understand that 
one of the ways that we manipulate depth of field is by the focusing distance. A very close focusing distance is going to yield a narrow depth of field even at say f f11 or f16 or f22 when you're shooting macro you're really talking about um, depth of fields that vary from a matter of inches to a fraction of an inch so it's very tough shooting macro uh, in terms of depth of field let's look at another natural light image i shot at f11 um, and this looks okay right except not really because when i zoom in the pedals in front are a little well, a little soft. See, they're not tack sharp. Here it's starting to get sharp because this is where I focused. We're all in here. But right here it's soft. Back here it's soft. And when you get back here, it's really soft. And this is at F11, focusing right here. Like right in that area there. The stuff in front here, these pedals right here are going soft. See that? Look at this pedal. It's nice and sharp back here, but then it's going soft. So even F11 was not a large enough depth of field to get this whole flower sharp front to back. I really should have been an F16 or even F22. But look, I'm at 1 60th of a second ISO 800, natural light. So really, I mean, I had my shutter as slow as I could shoot handheld. My ISO is up to 800 already. And I, if I had stopped down to F16 or F22, I couldn't have gone any slower with my shutter. I would have been up to ISO 3200. So, okay, I mean, the bottom line is, this is the reason I bring a flash to the table, so I can get more light and a larger depth of field. Here's my first shot with a flash. F11, 160th, ISO 800. I didn't change anything, and I should have. Because here, once again, nice and sharp. But look at that. It's going soft already. Now here it's really soft. F11 was simply the wrong setting for this image. But let me just show you very quickly. I've got some harsh highlights over here. I can get rid of them with my highlight slider. That's much better. Well, that's really about it. I'm not thrilled with this image. All right, let's move on. Um, let's look at this. This was a pretty cool image. I was experimenting with backlight. So that looks kind of cool, right? Now, up here I have my highlight clipping slider. Uh, button and that's what when you look at all these red pixels those pixels are clipped i can pull down my highlights and they go away that brings back some more detail in the highlights but look i don't know what these things are called but back here they're really too soft here they're nice and sharp right so once again too narrow a depth of field at f11 even so in here it looks a little dark so I can fix that pretty easily. First of all, I'm going to give the entire scene a little more clarity. And then I'm going to go to my radial gradient tool. Give it uh, maybe like, I don't know, a two-thirds of a stop more exposure, making sure invert mask is checked. So now when I draw out a radial gradient, everything inside that radial gradient is going to be uh, impacted by the edit. And in this case, more... Um, exposure, but I also want to give it more clarity. Ah, look at that. Now you can see all the detail in there. So if I hit done, here was before, here's after. Much better. You can see all that detail in there. Very cool, right? Um, but again, too bad that I didn't have a wide enough depth of field. I just want to point out that these little, these little, I don't know what these are. I guess maybe a spider. I don't know. But I could not see them with the naked eye but because they were being backlit they picked up the light from my flash i mean i know it looks like really obvious but i'm telling you i looked really close and i didn't see these really weird anyway okay next image okay this is my favorite image of the bunch i love the backlitness backlitness is that even a word but once again these little threads that was so weird i, I couldn't see them all right highlight slider pull it down Get rid of the clipped highlights. Um, give it a little more clarity. Just a touch more exposure. That'll that'll open up that background. Remember I was trying to bounce light back in there? Well, just giving it a half a stop more exposure overall in Lightroom. Clara cleared that right up. Okay, here, this image, I hit this with a flash straight on. Because I was using a, um, a, a full cut CTO gel on my flash, it made this flower look a little too orangey. So I can just take my temperature slider and pull a little bit more toward coolness. And then I'm going to go down here and edit. You can, you can edit colors, individual colors in Lightroom, which is really great. 
So I'm going to brighten up this flower a little bit by brightening the reds. I'm also going to pull the reds a little bit more toward magenta like that. And then maybe just back off a little bit on the saturation. If I back off a little bit on the saturation, I think I went too far with magenta. So more like that. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Here's before, here's after, before, after. So I was able to just influence the reds in this particular shot. And lastly, this would have been a great shot. But once again, for some bizarre reason, I went to F8. The depth of field is now even narrower. So bad move. Uh, all right, so the takeaway here is you have to be really aware of your depth of field and how your f-stop number affects that. The exposure triangle, you know, your ISO, your shutter speed, all of that comes into play uh, when shooting macro. And I bring a flash to the table to give me more light so I can get to narrow depth of fields. But even though I did that, I still didn't. I just should have been an f-16 or f, even f-22. So I'm going to go back out and shoot again knowing what to do so you know even though mostly this little exercise was a failure i still learn from it so you can too all right hope you guys learned something from this uh maybe this will be helpful for your own macro shooting and leave any comments below i'll see you next time bye